It's student versus teacher tonight here at Sliced. Another R versus Python showdown. Who will reign supreme and who will be sliced? That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was rehearsed. That was great. Uh... Landon Pixel is in his final year at Texas A&M. He's extremely, it seems like he's very competitive, but he's also very uh, advanced in terms of his knowledge in modeling and data science. He seems uh, very confident in his abilities, even as uh, as his career is just beginning. Uh, whereas uh, NC Champs, Kyle, um, he's been a teacher, he's held different jobs as a data analyst and data scientist, and he's a data scientist now. So the data set is a data set on beer reviews. So this is actually somewhat of an infamous Kaggle data set. Uh, someone scraped all this data from Beer Advocate, and they ended up putting this data set on Kaggle. Uh, we use that uh, to make a beer uh, recommender. If you like a certain profile of beer, then we can recommend, or the, the model would recommend a certain like, you know, here are the beers that you should try, but here are also the beers that you should probably avoid. What we're doing tonight is they're gonna have all these ratings from all these different beers and breweries. Uh, we've taken out one of the breweries and we've taken out uh, the reviews for that brewery specific to all these different reviewers. And they're trying to predict what all the reviewers are going to rate <laughs> these beers based off how they've reviewed other beers. Uh, I asked Meg, like, what brewery should, should we hold on? And, and she got to pick. So uh, what brewery was that, Meg? Yeah, the brewery that I picked is uh, Surly, which is a brewery that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, it's based in uh, Minneapolis or the Twin Cities, Minnesota, which is where I'm from. Here we go. All right, let's take a look, y'all. Um, this is R, so okay. I am guessing this is... This is Kyle. Or no, yes, this is Kyle that we're looking at. All console and all all, all notebook, but no, no environment pane. Like, I mean, everyone knows, like, since I mostly work in notebooks, I usually don't have, like, a specific layout, quote-unquote. It's just, like, give me the most yeah. minimal environment possible. Pixel has, uh, it looks like, oh, he, so it, I see what he's done. So he took all the data frames and he put them into a dictionary. And now he has a reviewer's data frame, mm. uh, the slice data set that we were just talking about, the brewery and beer information data frame. And, uh, and it looks like um, he might just be working with those data frames sort of independently right now. But uh, one trick that they'll, that, uh, and this isn't a golden feature, but maybe it should have been. <laughs> uh, one trick that they could do is if they join, and I tested the join, so I know they work. Um, if they just join all that together, uh, they could have one giganto data frame. Looking at this R window is like going back in time. Yeah, this is very like as pseudo Vim or Nano or like Notepad++ as you can get, giving me very yeah. sublime text vibes here. I love the color scheme though. It's very like kind of like Frankenstein, like spooky Halloween <laughs> colors. I don't know. Yeah, Halloween colors. That is good. Yeah. Pixel looks like he's trying to drop some features maybe can't delete calls from sliced lol lol uh-oh <laughs> is uh, it a very good sign if you type lol into a code comment well the way that he's dropping he's not putting access equals one so if he can't so if he's trying to drop the column then he's not dropping on the right axis right now and so when you do a drop you're actually dropping you're trying to drop just like anything that has a particular value in a row. It's very not intuitive. It's like one of those like weird, not intuitive pandas things where like the default should be, I want to drop a column, not I want to drop a value in a row. And so setting axis equals one tends to be something that you always do uh, with drop. The reason uh, why it's set up in that way is because of the usage of axis. Uh, axis equals zero, one, or two is uh, ubiquitous across a lot of the things in pandas. So that's sort of why it's designed the way it is. Also, incidentally, why dplyr is designed the way it is better than that. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Wow. Shots fired. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at Kyle, because it looks like he's headed towards the end of his model here. Oh my oh goodness. Oh my gosh, and I see ggplot. 
He's ready to go. The data visualization is upon us. Ooh, right. Point plots, okay. This is looking not fantastic. How do you think he's feeling when he sees that? He is feeling like this is a fuck ton of noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 he has plot. a fizz. He's got a plot. <laughs> yes. He did it. Mean test, but what is this? What are we looking at? Mean test yeah. scores, what? What are you? Al result is alpha mean test scores. Is this like significance? You know, Pixel keeps running into these column errors and I'm unsure where his errors are coming from because he does keep looking at, oh, it might just be him restarting his environment. That might be it. But he does keep looking at different cuts of his data and, and what he did, which is something like, it's, an, it's absolutely a technique I've used before, it might be hurting him a little, is that he's nested all of his data frames inside of a dictionary. And right. so he is doing things inside of a dictionary that requires one more key call. So he calls the data frame he wants to look at, and then he cuts through it. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think it might be you know giving him some slowdowns just because he doesn't necessarily know where he is in terms of you know, what data frame he's working with. Pixel is going yeah. through his grid search yet again. This is very, very... Oh, his session crashed. Oof. Yeah, so if you Oof. didn't catch that at the very bottom, if you've been in the stream long enough, you have seen my sessions crash like that. He has to reload all of his data, so he is going cell by cell, running every Ooh. single thing that he just did a little over 20 minutes to get in his predictions. And right now he has one data viz and no predictions yet. Have we noticed him like speed up a little bit now that you know, he's kind of like scrolling a little faster now that he's gotten the 15 minute warning? We might. Uh, I, I'm like sensing a little bit more panic as I watch this now. I don't so know at this is. point, if you were at this point, Meg, like, and nothing has worked, what would you do? I would be preparing sort of like the funny kind of like self-deprecating jokes I would tell when I was brought on for the Q&A section. What I would do if I was in this case where like none of the things I was doing before was working, I know that there are features, there are just straight up columns. And I could just kitchen sink the columns, just take all the features and shove that into a random forest and see what the fuck happens, right? Yeah, yeah. That Like that's what I would do categorically turn thing like any categories or strings turn that into like just integer any, codes yeah. take all the numeric uh columns shove that kitchen sink into the model cross my fingers and then at that point i know even though i've done zero feature engineering zero manipulation mm -hmm. of my data set i know that those features exist in right the the holdout so mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. I mean, honestly, like that's kind of the guidance I said it up front is like, I would have maybe done that first, just so I have that peace of mind, knowing that I've like got, you know, I've got something end to end that's working. Um, Cause I think that would just like put me a little bit more at ease, um, you know, throughout the rest of the, the live coding session. Oh, wow. What? NS Chance just dropped um, GBM predictions in. Say what? He actually okay. trained this model. Oh damn! He actually trained it and got it in under the under the time. So he wasn't just sitting there. I guess he was he was waiting for the GBM to go through. Wow, that's incredible, Nick. It is officially 11 p.m. Should we uh, go ahead and ask our contestants to un unmute and undeafen? Oh wow! Um, yeah. Tell, tell us how are you feeling? What are your like first first reactions? Just like get it out, like. <laughs> uh, so halfway through, uh, I kept thinking. Y'all know uh, Star Wars Episode One, right? You know the pod racing scene. Okay, you know where that one like pod racer just totally misfires from the from the start and just doesn't pick up whatsoever. Yeah. That's how I felt like this entire time. Yeah, that's, I could. I, I that's how that. I felt. At first, I had a good idea that like we have. What we're trying to predict and we also have like prior information about the breweries and the reviewers mm -hmm. and i was like thinking about like which columns to merge which ones to delete and i think mm -hmm. i got like really hung up on that and then yeah. i started to look towards visualization and then i was just like all right time's getting short 
let me just try to make a model. And then I started to get like a little bit nervous there. Yeah. And I spiraled from there, but we'll see how my random number generator did. <laughs> <laughs> so our audience poll winner who gets the first 10 points of the night Another R stats user, Kyle and S Champs 2004. Um, so congrats, Kyle, uh, for winning the first 10 points of the night. For the golden features, uh, I don't believe anybody created a line plot with points. Our second golden feature was to uh, actually use the reviewer data um, and use it for feature engineering in your model. That is also another golden feature that just was out of reach. The third golden feature is that um, we wanted you to beat uh, Nick's benchmark when he played with this data. Our beat the benchmark is a RMSE of uh, 0.3 or better. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh wait, my uh, screen's backwards. You can't. I'm like trying to. <laughs> we'll fix it in prod, okay? Which I think we know what this means for the modeling portion, which is worth 30 points. Mm -hmm. um, also, don't forget there's the, the last golden feature of beat the benchmark. So are you ready to reveal the final scores? To beat me, you have to beat 0.3 as well. So Kyle, you got an RMSE of 0 0.5. Three, five. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Pixel, you got RMSE of 1.034. That's not bad for RNG, dude. So th this does mean, Pixel, you are sliced tonight. You have been sliced. I'm sorry, Pixel. A pleasure having both of you on. Uh, excited to see what your guy you guys are going to do next week. So uh, uh, GG's to both of you. Yeah, yeah thanks for doing this, guys. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. GG. It's a good game. Good Looking game. forward to Landed. seeing you next week. It's still anyone's game. If you win it in this next week, you're just as, you know, you're just right up there in the running with everyone else. Uh, there's still only 30 points to be given out for the best model. Um, and there, and data viz. Now that we can spread data viz across four people. All right. Have a good night, y'all. Have a good night, chats.